Good evening. I hope everyone is well. Welcome to another Shear on YouTube on this week's Parsha. In addition to being this Shabbos, Parsha Re, it's Rosh Chodesh El. And we hope that the entire month will be special in everyone's level of health, everyone's level of nachas, and everyone's level of parnosa, harchava. Now, we know that the Medrash talks about the fight of Yaakov Avinu with Esau. We all know that in Parshas Vayishlach, Yaakov Avinu went back to get the Pachim Ketanim that he had left over some little jugs. And Chazal say, because spending time of Olam Azed to earn the money or to have any possession, you take away sometimes from Ruchnias, so it's valuable to the Tzaddik. It's not that we discard the time and the possession. But the Medrash says that when they had the fight, Yaakov with the Sar Shal Eso, one of the issues was who would have the projection and the supervision, the hashpa of the month would be directly under whom? So as soon as they saw it, Yaakov Avinu took hold of Nisan, Ir, and Sivan. Because he knew that there would be no Pesach or Pesach Sheni or Shavuos in those three months if it was under the Hashpa of Esau. But once he did it, the Sarshal of went and grabbed Tammuz of an El. Now, before Mashiach comes and there's Geula, Tzaddikim speak about the fact that there has to be some bone, something thrown to the Samach Mem. That means in the perfect world, after the Geula Shlema, we don't have to give anything to the Samach Mem, to the Koyach Atoma. But under the umbrella of Golos, they, they keep getting things because we don't want a Kapeda and we don't want them to fight us because they're not happy when we're doing mitzvahs and we're getting such schar and we're giving such a nachas ruach to our Kodesh Baruch Hu. So that's the reason that we have hairs in the tefillin. You notice the little hairs. That is the soir la zozel. That's for the samach mem. Like throwing a bone because after Yidin put tefillin on, there is such a thirst for destruction by the samach mem. So it's like, in a certain sense, a pacification. By throwing, you give someone a candy, they quiet down a little bit. And that's the reason we wash al pikabola mayim achroinim. Because mayim achroinim is something that the Gemara says it's because of the salt, that we don't want it in our eyes. But al pikabola, the reason for mayim achroinim is after a suda of Shabbos or Yom Tiv, that there was such oin, oinig Shabbos or such simchas Yom Tiv, with the singing, with the divrei Torah, with the ma'acholim, the foods, the delicious delicacies that are served Lekovit Shabbos. And Lekovit Yom Tiv, we leave the Samach Mem devastated. So at the end, we try to calm him down a little, not to attack us and not to bother us. We wash Mayim Achorin, that's his. 
And that's why we don't leave it on the table and we get it out of the place that we're benching. We don't want something that was delivered for the Samach Mem to have him uh, lurking and staying around. So Tammuz and Av really, Tol Mashiach come, are under that influence and power of the Samach Mem. And of course, by Hamisha Sabaot, as I've spoken in the past weeks, it's transformed Latov, Chesed, and Rabbi. That's how we had Nebuch, the ego, and we had the destruction of the two Bate Migdash, and we had the Shaviras, Haluchos, many bad things that affected us for the last 3,000 years was because of those six weeks under the Hashpa of Esau. But the problem says the Medrash, and the Bnei Sosra, the Arizal, and many others elaborate that when Yaakov Avinu got done taking Nisan, Ir, and Sivan, and Asaph took Thomas of an Elul, Yaakov Avinu said, impossible. Klal Yisrael needs Elul. They can't go into Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, and Sukkot without the preparation and having in its domain, in its court, the month of El. And that indeed was one of the reasons of the fight between the Sar Shalesov and Yaakov Avinu was to be able to get back into the realm of Yaakov El. And he did win the fight. And the Arizal says that in the Pasuk of our Romimcha Elokai Ki Dilisani Velosi Machta Oyevayli, that that is Alpi Kabbalah, the Pasuk that Yaakov Avinu said in celebration of having won back the month of Elo captured it back. And if someone knows al the Kabbalah, the Kavanas of the Arizal in that Pasek, it's spelled out under the surface clearly how it relates to the month of Elul and that fight. So we're going into a month that can steer the entire journey of those that time zone that we want to succeed for the new year, Haba Aleinu Latoiva, and it should be a Shana Tova Umesuka, with lots of Hatzlocha, with lots of Gesund, with lots of Nachas. And that is the month of Elul. Now, each and every day of Elul. Besides that we say Ledovid and that we blow Shoifer beginning with the second day, the second day of Rosh Chodesh, which is the first day of Elo, it evokes and brings about the conditions. It's like a person driving a car. So if he gets in the car and the seat was put down or put back and the mirror he can't function, he can't reach comfortably the steering wheel, he can't uh, change the, he can't see behind him because the mirror is way out of place. So the ability to navigate the hours, as I said to you, it's 960 hours from Rosh Chodesh El Tol Yom Kippur, and those 960 hours are connected to 960 Lugan of the Memsa of the Mikvah, because just like a Mikvah is Metara Mezachech, so are the hours of Elul and the 10 days of Tishrei, the first 10 days. We're like in a, a state of Mikvah processing the purification of one soul and one self. 
Now, the first word of the Pusik of Parshas Re'eh is Re'eh. The Mefor, the Re, it says Re'eh Anochi no Sein Lefneichem Hayom Baracha and Klo. The Meforshim jump at the fact that the first word Re'eh is a singular. But he was speaking to the whole Klo and you even see in the Pasek no Sein Lefneichem, which is a plural. So why is the first word in singular when he was speaking to the entire Klal Yisrael? And the proof being that the word Lefnechem is indeed a plural. So one of the answers that is given is that people go through life with a distorted vision of what they have been granted. That they have been bestowed with so much bracha, with so much blessing in their lives, that the one or two problems which each and every person has, it, it overshadows all of the good. So, the Mepharshim say that the first word is singular because Moshe Rabbeinu was indeed talking while he was addressing the whole Klai but he wanted a message for the individual. And he said, that you can live your life never suffering more than you have to because you ne never recognize the bracha of life. And once you recognize the bracha of life, then you're able to be part of the lefnechem, the whole klal Yisrael. So that's one of the reasons that re'e is a singular. Now, in Parshas Vayeshev, you will take note that when Yosef HaTzadik was sold down to Mitzrayim and landed in the house of Potiphar, that the Pasuk says three or four times, V'chol asher hu osa Hashem matzliach biyado, v'chol asher hu osa matzliach, the word matzliach is used over and over. But suddenly, the Pasuk says, Vayihi meyoz ki hifkut oso al kol beiso, vayavarech Hashem. That HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave a bracha. So the Yid HaKadosh picked up and on this difference and wanted to make the distinction he was called the Yid HaKadosh because he had the exact same name as the Choyza, his Rebbe, Yaakov Yitzvok. And this Haverim couldn't, in front of the Rebbe, call him. So they used to call him Yid HaKadosh, Yid, like the, the Jew, the holy Jew. And they didn't have to say out because it wasn't their Heretz to say the name in front of their Rebbe even though they were not calling their Rebbe, they were talking to their friend. But they called him the Yid HaKadosh, so he says that Hatzlocha is less than Brocha. And when he was in Potiphar's house and he was still under Potiphar, and he had a report to him every day and he had to do this and that, he was under his Hashpa and supervision, he can only be zoichet to Hatzlocha. And that's why it says three or four times, Hatzlocha, Hatzlocha, Hatzlocha. Like if a person makes in his store $1,000 a week, and one week he had a booming week, he made 3000 That's Hatzlocha. 
it's still under the umbrella of <coughs> Teva. That Hashem gave him a successful week. He got some orders and that he never had before. But Bracha, if he made not 3,000, but suddenly one week he made 35,000. That's not Hatzlocha. That's something that that type of a business or store never makes more than three or 4,000. To make 35,000, that's Bracha. Says the Yid HaKadosh, Vayihi Meyaz, that when Potiphar said, you know, you don't have to report to me. Do what you want. It's under your supervision. It's under your... Oh, I'm not under the Hashva of the Goy anymore. Vayivarech Oso. The Pesach says that Bracha came and it became so manifest and so tremendous and that's Chutz L'derech HaTeva now in our opening Pasek to the individual that we just said that Moshe Rabbeinu wanted to look at every Yid and say you wake up and you wake up and see what graciousness you have of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. so the Pasuk ends, Rei Anochi Nosen Lefneichem, Hayom, Brocha, it doesn't say Hatzlocha, and Brocha, uh, and Plola, it says Brocha, because Moshe Rabbeinu was, wanted to tell them, the sky is the limit. You can excel and exceed any expectation, but you have to take yourself out from under that impression that you're limited and you can't do this and you could do that. Don't look at any limitation because you have the ability inherent in your talents and other strengths that HaKadosh Baruch Hu has given you to bring you full bracha. Now, in our Sedra, it also talks extensively about kashras, the animals that we could eat and can't eat and all of that. And one of the psukim says, lo toch lenu, and it ends up, lo toch lenu es hadam, talking about the blood, the blood of the treif animals or the blood of a kosher animal, when we buy a piece of meat, now the butchers do everything. But 60 years ago, our grandmothers and parents, and that, they had to take the meat and soak it and salt it. Why? They had to get every trace of every drop of blood out. We are a people with not only the Averis and the mitzvahs, so there's an Avera to eat blood. And that's why it was so ridiculous, this blood libel that was hanging over Klyusel. And it wasn't just 500 years ago in Europe or in Russia. In 1928, there was a unbelievable position that Klyusel was in in upstate New York that there was a blood libel. A boy had died and they said the Jews did it to get his blood. And the reason that Les Rebel Khanan Wasserman used to say that it was so absurd to say such a thing because blood is one of the most despised commodities that every Yid wants to get away from. We don't want anything to do with the blood. And Rebbe Hanan answered and said that so how could it be that Minashamayim, that the Goyim don't realize that we have nothing ever to do to blood, so we want their blood for our matzahs. And he said it was a kapara, all of the tsaris, the blood libels, for the fact that the Shiv Tekot wanted to fool Yak Yitzchak. Yaakov, to fool Yaakov 
when they dipped the tonic into the blood, the Xoinus passed him to fool the father. And my other similar one is the good and never the bad. That because they did that involving blood, we paid with the blood libel. So said Rabbi Ochanan Vasarin, Zecher Tzadik Vakadosh Levrocha, Zechuso Yogin Aleinu. But the Meforshim are curious. Why is it? And Rabbi Yonason Abshitz talks a lot about it. That the Pasuk concludes when it talks this whole discussion in our center about blood. That it says, Leman Yivarechecha you Ulevanecha and your children. When we talk about mitzvahs throughout the Torah, tefillin, we don't bring up, we tell the person, this is what you're expected to do. And it's a mitzvah, and you make a nachas ruach for a kodesh baruch. But we don't bring the children in. Why is this, asks Rabbi Yonis and Abshitz, brought into this pasuk when it talks about the blood, the children? Because there is nothing that has a bigger effect on the ruchnius of children than what the father, the parents eat. And that's why the halach is, if a woman is pregnant, she could be eating cholavakim her whole life. But it says she's pregnant, she shouldn't eat cholavakim. Why? If it's kosher and mutter, and she's doing it her whole life, what, it suddenly becomes not kosher? But the answer is it is kosher. But it's affecting, it's not the first class level of chol Yisrael. And when you want to develop not only the body inside of a woman's body, the child she's going, that uh, she's expecting and going to, as a Hashem, give birth to, you have to provide the healthy foods for your own health, and she has to provide the foods that will be healthy for the ruchnias of that child, because she's developing that at the very same time that she's developing the skin and the bones and the everything of that new child. So foods really affect us in a way, and it's the only thing, tray food is metamptum, the lev. And when I was once asked, how many Jews could be so against Eretz Yisrael? It doesn't even make sense. I answered because they're, unfortunately, so much of Christ is busy eating the shrimp and the lobsters and that. And after 20, 30, 40 years, it's so drenched into their neshama. It's metamptum love. They can't even think. Seichel dick. Because forget about Eretz Israel and the Torah. Is it a democracy? Did they ever start up with the Arabs? All it looks for is peace and quiet and to be able to educate and enjoy their family. They never attacked any Arabs. They only retaliated if they did something. So foods are very prominent in what we eat, and it has a direct correlation with our ruchnias. And it doesn't say that if you don't put on tefillin, it's metamtem delev. Or you don't take a lulav and a nesrik on sukkahs, it's metamtem, it's not metamtem delev, but the foods are. And it affects not only ourselves, it affects our children. And that's why the Pusik says, that when you will keep this Indian of getting rid of the blood, not eating it, it's going to be good. It's going to be good for you. And to your children, because they're going to be beneficiaries of the tremendous brocha and blissfulness by people who are medactic in what they eat. Let's not forget that if there's one bug in a piece of lettuce and you eat it, 
it could be Meshogig, of course, but you eat it. <coughs> There's five lavender rice. Five. <coughs> Excuse me. If a person um, doesn't take the Lula Vanessa, they're Mavatal one, Mitzvah Sasei Diaraisa, of having a Lula Vanessa. But by Kashras, it's much more stringent. Somebody once said to me, Well, I never eat this or that, meaning a ham and cheese or the, the shrimp that we said. Uh, I stick to, like, you know, a cow, steaks. But a steak usually is not just a, a lav of busser of treif meat, because when they take out a steak that's treif, there's all, almost always some of the chayla that's usser, and that's a of chorus, excision. Chasashon, someone eats that chayla. And he's just thinking he's eating a steak. Okay, it's not kosher, but it's not pig, and it's not this, and it's not chol shabbos, and it's not. But he is eating the chaylev, so he has to be very, very careful. And we can never stress enough the importance and the achrayas. Now, we know eight echad nemam bisurin. Otherwise, there would be a chiyav when a woman cooks in her kitchen and she'd have to have a mashkiach or she would have to bring up the cans and all of the items to show the guests how to prove it's kosher but we have a rule by women that they can come and say that they are tahor tahora so therefore, why? Because of eight echad neman bi isurim. These are isurim. And if the woman comes, she has the nemanis when she says, I'm tahor, this is kosher. We believe her and we can 100% rely on her status for kashras. So it's something that we have to always revisit if we are indeed being careful enough. Now, the Pasuk says, and lo sasun kein la Hashem elokecha. So the Vilna Gon asks, why is it that this Pasuk at the beginning of Re'eh talks about the Goyim, that they would erase the, the name of their, you know, that the, they would have their names of the God, and that we have a chiv to erase and to get rid of all of their names and all of their matzevas, these things of the Goyim. And right afterward, and it says, Lo sasun kin la shem erasing, or you're erasing the names of the Goyish gods, but when it comes to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Chas Shalom. It's a terrible Avera if someone has the name of Hashem and he goes and erases it. Chas is a terrible thing. So the Vilna Gon asks that right after that halach that we learn, that you're not allowed to erase the name of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, it talks about the base of Mikdash. All of the inyonim of Mizbeach and things of Beis Hamikdash. So he asks, why does it come right after this discussion of wipe out their names that don't do it, Takarish Baruch? So he says an interesting thing that when David HaMelech began uh, building the Beis HaMikdash and he started to dig, so it says that the water came gushing out to such a point that it was going to flood the entire world. So Achitofel came running to David and said the way 
to stop the water so that everyone won't be dead is to throw in on a parchment the name of HaKadosh Baruch Hu into the water where it's gushing and it's going to stop. So the truth is, the Pusik says you wipe out the name of God, of, of the, the idols, but not of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So what was Achidofo telling him? to take a part with Hashem's name and throw it in the water. Because we learn out by Soita that you're never allowed to erase Hashem's name, but by a Soita, we, a woman who's being accused of disloyalty or infidelity, that what do we do? We give her to drink a cup of water in the Beisamek, Dush. Because our, and we put into that water parchment with Hashem's name and it's erased. And if she was accused for nothing, those waters make her pregnant. And the Gemara says that there were many women who wanted to get pregnant and they couldn't. So they went and put themselves into the position that the husband would have to suspect them of being disloyal and they would have to be brought by the husband to the base of Mikdash and the Koyin would have to go through the process and they knew that they were innocent and they all became pregnant. So it was a way to work the system. Chaz Roshon, someone who was disloyal, opposite Bracha was not so good for them, not good at all. But says the Gra that Achitofel said that if the Beis Amigdosh is the vehicle to bring peacefulness, Akkadosh Baruch Hu said, to bring peace between husband and wife, erase my name. I want you to. So even though normally we're not allowed to do such a thing, but in the case of the whole world being destroyed, not just a husband and wife, but the whole world being destroyed, so he said that I, Paskin, that certainly you're allowed to take the name and throw it down and look high. and that's what happened. He did it and it became peaceful and they continued the building of the base on me. So we see how much our Kodesh Baruch Hu loves his people and wants to go to great lengths to preserve and to increase and to bring about Shalom ben Ishla Ishto, how much he's concerned for his own children, Klal Yisrael, and that his goal to bring peace and love between yid and yid to yid, how strong it is and how unbelievable it is. Now, in our sedra, we have the Indian of tzedakah. And I quite often underscore how big tzedakah, because it says, Sadaka's tatsal mimoves, that when someone's lying in a bed in a hospital, dying, and if someone goes to Aniyam who have no food and gives it, that could save the person. It says tatsal mimoves. That Sadaka, it doesn't say tfilin tatsal mimoves. It doesn't say Shabbos tatsal mimoves. But by Sadaka, it does say it. And I've quoted to you the Arizal that we never know. He says, there are many people who are Gilgulim because somebody came to them and asked them for tzedakah and they didn't give it. And they have to come back in another life to fix that. And both people meet up again. And he has the opportunity, that's why I always say, you don't know who and what. So if someone can't give five dollars, give a dollar. They can't give a dollar, give 50 cents, give a quarter, but give something that at least you've given because it's so big, and it's a tzedakah mekareves, a 
So it saves lives. It's good, and it's this week's parsha about um, Sadaka How and it keeps repeating Ki Beglala Dover Azet Yivarechecha Hashem Hakadosh Baruch Hu gives you plenty of bracha because of that. So these things that it says, it doesn't say by any other mitzvah to that level. Avad Shiluach Hakan and Kibud Av Laman Yarichun Yamin, but the Gemara says that many hold that that's referring to Olam Haba. It doesn't mean that if you're supposed to live till 80, that you'll live to 90 because you took care of your sick mother, your sick father. But it means you will get more days because the Pesach says it, but it's referring to Olam Haba. But there are some. Less, but some who hold it means here, right in Olam Hasev, that it is something that can bring that about. And the Gemara in Baba Basra says the following episode. There was a Gabbai Tzedakah named Binyamin, and he was called Binyamin Hatzadik because he used to go around collecting and bringing together money and then he went to the Aniyim and he gave out that they should have food to eat and clothes to wear. And this Binyamin Sadik was confronted by a woman who came to him and said, Rebbe, I need Sadoka. And he said, I promise you that I don't have a single coin in my pocket. I've used the entire Kupit Sadoka for people who need it. So she answered him and said that if you don't give me something, I and my seven children are gonna perish. We're at the brink of disaster. We haven't eaten for a long time, and if it goes any longer, we're gonna die out. So when Binyam, the Gemara says when Binyamin HaTzadik heard that, he had on him, and the Marsha says on the spot, that he had money which was for himself, for his ch wife and children, for his family, for food. So it wasn't like he had his own extra money or that he needed it for the livelihood of his family. He took the money out and he gave everything to the woman. Now the Gemara says that meant years later, it doesn't say if it was eight years later, 10 years later, Years later, there was a Gezeira in Shemaim that Binyamin HaTzadik should die young. And he was about to die. So the Malachi Asharis, the Gemara says, jumped up to Akrosh and said that in the Torah, it says if you save one Jewish life, it's considered as if you saved an entire world. And here he saved a woman and seven children. There were eight people in So the Gemara says that when the Malachim got done saying this, I could have said, you know, you're right. And Binyamin Atzadik, who was about to die, he lived another 22 years. So the question that the Vilna Gon asks, why 22 years? Why not 24? Why not 18? Why 22? So he makes a magnificent judgment because the Gemara says that if a person <coughs> gives tzedakah, he gets six brachas from Shammai. He gets six brachas. Bahamafaya so, and if after or while giving the money, he comforts and consoles the person who needs the money, he gets 11 brachas. Six plus another five, 11 brachas. Now, over here, Binyamin Atzada got 11 brachas, but it was for eight people. It was the woman and it was seven children. Each one was a separate thing. So it wasn't 11 brachas, it was 88 brachas. Because 11 times eight is 88. Now the Gemara in Soita says 
that when a person does a new something and has a schuz, three months life is added to his predestined amount of how long he's going to live, he gets another three months. So, says the Vilna Gong, if a per here he got 88 brachas, <coughs> and there's three months for each bracha, for each schos. So 88 times three months times three is exactly 264 ex months, exactly 22 years. Exactly 22 years. So in my school, I didn't let them start the day. There was always a pushka and then the thing by the faculty meeting, I told the teachers, before you put your sperm out before anything. You take out the pushka and no classroom is to be ever without a pushka. And we're giving everyone a pile of nickels, dimes, penny, and a coin that pushka has to go around every job before we begin anything. Because the B'nai Sosker says on the Pasuk and Tillam, Ani Echazeb. Anipet Sedek Echazeponech, which means I with righteousness will see you, Akkadish Baruch Hu. Hopefully, my Maisim are righteous. But he touched, he translated it, Anipet Sedek, with Sedaka Echazeponech, I will see your face. And that's why the B'nai Soska says no one should ever start davening before they give something to Sedaka. Because the Pasuk says, Ani B'Tzedek, Tzedaka, then Eche Zepanecha, I see your face, I couldn't try, meaning davening. So, everyone should start their day with a pruta to Tzedaka, even before they step out of the house. You can never tell what's waiting for you outside the house, and it could be that that dollar bill that you put into the pushka that day before you left your house can save you from a severe accident. It's Tatsul Mimavis, that's what the Chazal say. They don't say it on anything, and it says Mevi Gula. So I would hope that everyone would, in every which way, broaden the scope of their tzedakah. You don't have to be a Gavir. And the Yetzirah, of course, it's such a big mitzvah, always kicks in. Uh, does the person really deserve the tzedakah? No. A Jew comes up to you, puts out his hand, you give it. His cheshbon is with HaKadosh Baruch was his business. Our chiyav is not to question, not to ask, and not to investigate. person put out his hand, you give something. And it's the only mitzvah that I could have who says you're allowed to test me with. That if you think you're losing money, that a person had a thousand dollars on him and he gave away two hundred and fifty dollars, and he said, Well, you know, it could be I'm gonna need this two hundred and fifty dollars. Baruch Hu says, Uve Khanuni no bezos. I'm begging you. Normally on a mitzvah, you're not a person put on a hundred people filling that day. And then at the end of the day, he said, oh, I could have broke, oh, I want to win the lottery or do this for my children. I mean, I just got them putting on a hundred people tefillin. That's an iser dear It's a low sanasun as such. You're not allowed to test, I could have broke. But by tzedakah, the opposite. That I could have broke, who says, I am begging you, test me. See at the bottom line, if you lose out by whatever tzedakah you give, am I good enough as a guarantor for your success or that it will come back to you one way or another? And don't be so sh short-sighted listening to the Samach Mem, the Yetzirah, convincing you not to give the dollar with every which way to get you out of it. 
of having that unbelievable schus. So we should all be zoichet to chesed and to the beautiful schusim of tzedakah, what it brings for us and our families. And that's the biggest investment in being matzliach and having bracha. And we should be able to develop the dignity and the beauty of our ruchnius encased, packaged, wrapped in the most magnificent wrapping with full ribbons of the magnitude of giving tzedakah and how we give tzedakah to the person that we are giving. A person should never talk about what he gives. A person should never pat himself on the back because of it. He should try to do it as purely as possible because the more pure, the more the packaging going up Takarish Baruch is magnificent. Agutanach, thank you for joining us today.